Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled commission meeting, Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. The time is now 7.01. Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Bass. Here. Vice Mayor Irvin. Here. Commissioner, Commissioner Williams. Here. Mayor Taylor. Here. As we stand for our invocation, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. God, we thank you for bringing us together one more time in your name. God, we ask that you cover us, that we do your will for your people. God, we also ask that you cover the Lenoir family and their loss. And we thank you for what you're doing in this city and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our Pledge of Allegiance pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a special presentation by Commissioner Veronica J. Williams. Commissioner Williams, you have the floor. Okay, can you all uh, join me, if you don't mind, down front? Yes. You want to stay up there? Okay, okay. Good evening, everyone. So as you know, last month was Women's History Month. And as women, it is very hard to get us all together uh, at one event. First, I want to give a personal shout out to everyone that came to the Sister Soiree. We know it's going to be bigger and better. Um, we had a great time and everyone on the city staff, as well as uh, marketing, our photography. Um, again, it was a great time right down to our entertainment. We had a few women, four women, that we highlighted during the soiree that are entrepreneurs here in the city. Um, two of them did come, but I do want to make sure that we highlight them. Uh, Fatia, well, we know her as Tia Doster from Juice Define as well as Ms. Charlene Ingraham from Jackson Soul Food. And these are two places that if you're like me in Opelika, frequent often. And surprisingly, yes, I do go to Juice to Find a lot. <laughs> well, she told me about the Beta Rita and I've been on it ever since. So I do, I would like to highlight two others that um, we did want to highlight and celebrate is, oh, and this is beautiful, right? Isn't that nice? Most awards don't look this nice. Did y'all see it? So, so I do want to bring up Miss... Soika Mincy Edie, give her a hand, give her a hand. Right on time and gorgeous. <laughs> Miss Edie is a passionate advocate for mental health and community support, where she currently serves as president and chief officer of eye care enrichment. Center and Eye Care Transitional Haven, LLC. And through these institutions, she leads a team of de dedicated professionals that where she provides essential mental health, mental health services. And we know this is the time we definitely need all of our mental health professionals and housing solutions to individuals in need within our community. So we want to give a special Women's History Month slash year, 360, to Ms. Soika Mincy Edie for all she does here in the city of Opelika.
and lastly, Miss Fush Muff. Oh no, I got that her already. Lastly, Miss Anika. I cannot say her last name. I'm gonna say Miss Anika from Seek Foundation. And Miss Anika, which provides public health services whenever, wherever, and however it is needed to empower lifelong problem solvers through innovative programs. And we know that she works with our STEM pro pro program. Isn't that beautiful? Right? Commissioner Williams? Oh, yes. She, unfortunately, she was not able to make the meeting, but she is joining us virtually. virtually. Okay. Is she on? Just a moment. Okay. Okay. What? Okay, so just to save time. No, no, it's okay. So we highlight and salute all of our women entrepreneurs here in the city. And we know that um, as and we know women, not that not to say anything about men, but we know that it takes that village of women to make communities go and communities run. So once again, we shout out all, all of you, all of you each day and every day. All right, thank you guys. So shout out to all of our honorees that received the award during our Women's History um, Sister Soiree Extravaganza, I'll say that. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner um, Williams, for ensuring that our women, you know, were highlighted during this time. As we get ready to go to our consent agenda, do we have any pulls, deferrals, or deletions for from the consent agenda? Okay, I like this. No pulls, no deferrals. We we moving tonight. Okay. All right. Um Madam, let's um can we get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move it. Approve I'm sorry. Um we have an add-on, right? <laughs> yes, Mr. Mayor. We do have an add-on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's approve the consent agenda. You said move by Vice Mayor, second, second by Commissioner Bass, Madam um, Clerk Roll Call. Vice Mayor Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. All righty. And the add on, Madam Clerk, could you read on the record, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, good evening. We have a request to amend the agenda as follows a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Opalaca, Florida, authorizing the City Manager to execute Amendment 1 to the payment plan agreement between the City of Opalaca and Glorietta Partners LTD relating to an outstanding water and sewer bill balance, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager, and this item will be included as 14-1. Okay, normally, Mr. Manager, I would ask you the emergency nature, but I remember this item, the commission asked you to bring it this meeting, so we won't do that now. Um, can we get the approval of tonight's agenda? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor, second by Commissioner Bass. Mr. Mayor, can I get a motion and second on the add-on item? I'm sorry. I'm Move sorry. Um, can I get a motion on the add-on item? Move it. Moved by um, Commissioner Williams, second by Vice Mayor. So this is for the add-on item. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Vice Mayor Irvin? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Okay. And in approval of the agenda, we'll do it again. Can I get a motion? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Commissioner Williams. Madam Clerk. 
Commissioner Williams. Yes. Commissioner Baz. Yes. Vice Mayor Urban. Yes. Mayor Taylor. Yes. Motion passes for zero. All right. Can I have a motion for the approval of the minutes, special commission meeting minutes, March 8, 2024? Move it. Moved by um, Commissioner Baz. Second. Second by Vice Mayor, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Bass. Yes. Vice Mayor Urban. Yes. Commissioner Williams. Yes. Mayor Taylor. Yes. Motion passes for zero. All right. Approval of minute for the rescheduled regular commission meeting minutes, March 18th, 2024. Can I get a motion? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Commissioner Williams. Um, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Urban. Yes. Commissioner Williams. Yes. Commissioner Bass. Yes. Mayor Taylor. Yes. Motion passes for zero. All right. And we don't have, do we have any District 1, District 2, or state reports at this time? No, Mr. Mayor. All right. And no public presentations. So we're moving on to our Citizens Forum. Madam Clerk, can you please read in the record how to participate in Citizens Forum? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. City of Opelika Commission meetings are held in person at the Opelika Government Center, City Commission Chambers, 780 Fisherman Street, 3rd Floor, Opelika, Florida. Members of the public wishing to address the commission may do so in person or virtually. Those persons wishing to participate virtually should register prior to the scheduled meeting time on the city's website at www.opalacafl.gov. When speaking before the commission, please make sure to give your full name and address for the record. There is a three minute time limit for public comments. Please adhere to the decorum policy, which is part of the commission meeting agenda. City commission meetings are aired through live stream at www.youtube.com slash user slash city of Oplaka. And at this time, Mr. Mayor, I do not have any virtual public comment. All right. So we're going to open up Citizens Forum. For those of you that are in the audience, Citizens Forum is open. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioner. Oh, it's on. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Luis Santiago. Uh, uh, my resident address is 1156 Perry Operai in Opalaca, Florida, 33054. 20 years living there in that address. And I really live there. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I know that I have a three minute and I'm going to try to explain it myself in behind for many uh, residents for the great city of Palaka. And I don't want to say uh, that the, uh, any group that they, that they are in, because I believe that in Opalaka, we only, we only one, we only are one, only one. Okay. We're not dividing. Okay. And I see the last week that I have a lot of calls from people and I even watch it in channel for it. Okay. The way that we be treating Okay, in the city for some of the uh, people that they sit in here in this data. I think it's not fair. I believe it's not fair. We are humans like everybody else. And I believe that we have the right to talk and we have the right to come to the meeting and spread ourselves. One of the thing is, okay, it's a lot of things going on that the Hispanic community, they don't even know what's going on because we don't have any communication between the city and the resident or that part of the uh, city, the Wapalaka. I see like in meetings that we have, we don't even have a public, uh, people for the public coming to the meeting because they don't have the right information to do. It's an ordinance that is gonna happen tonight that I believe this is the third one. That's the third one that that person bring. And I see this only, it's only for that part of the Spanish people. Okay, that we live here in the great city of Palaka when honesty and respect. I know that we have to live when rules and regulation, but we have to, we have to, or the city have to, okay, let it know first whatever what's going on and what you people want to do with us in respect. When the trailers, okay, when the uh, chickens that they bring in before that they want to take all the chicken out of Palaka, okay, and that's Another thing that they accuse the Spanish that we, uh, you know, growing chickens and all that. And the other one, okay, like the boat, it's fine. Yes, we need some regulation. But at least, yes, do some uh, uh, meeting for us and teaching us, okay, what's, you know, really going on, okay, when this situation that we have in the great city of Opalaka. 
I hope that I don't break any sunshine love when I talk. But listen, I think it's time, okay, to have a little more respect for my community. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Citizens Forum is still open. Uh, Brian, Brian Dennis, address 2140 York Street. I'm going to use my time wisely, and I want to thank a lot of people for showing me a lot of ways since 1997. One of them is the late Miss Evelyn LaRock, who taught me how to be an activist in the city, and the late Miss Ollie B. Kelly and current commissioner Joseph Kelly and your mom, former Mayor, Mayor Taylor, and Commissioner Home. From what I don't see in this city and the examples that I don't see, I'm announcing my bid to run for the seat come November. So I'm putting my hat in the ring and I'm not backing out. I'm quite sure I'm going to get jumped during this election. But do know I am ready. And we are coming in ways that you all are not planned for. I want to go to section two, dash three of the city chart. And it talks about a national criminal history screening for the city manager. Pursuant to Florida statute 166.0442, and what it basically said is that you have to have a background check and you have to pass a fingerprints obtained. I'm losing you reading the latter part of it. It says each such person shall be fingerprinted who is applying for city manager or continuing employment or appointment as city manager. The city of Opelika Human Resources Department, its successor department, and other applicable departments shall conduct such state and national criminal history black background checks. We know what that was about. So we see that there's a gross violation of what happened in the city child. There was a direct violation. And Ms. Adams stood up in and said there were two people that didn't qualify with the background check. And we know who was the great candidate for the city that she was overlooked during Women's History Month. But here's the key to it. Section 112, 5-1 point of the Florida statute provide that the governor may suspend from office any elected municipal officer for malfeasance, misfeasance, neglect of duty, habitual drunkenness, incompetence, or permanent inability to perform official duties. The definition of a malfeasance is an intentional conduct that is wrongful or unlawful, especially by officials or public employees. Misfeasance is a transgression, especially the wrongful excuse of lawful authority. So when there was an opportunity to do the right thing, this commission elected to do the wrong thing. And I'm quite sure the city attorney wanted to address it. But Madam Attorney, if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't have addressed it neither because there are three votes up here, I'm quite sure, that are willing and ready to fire you had you said anything. So now let's go back to what Commissioner Santiago was talking about with the trailers. Isn't it funny how you all got on that scooter and took that picture in the front of a house that has a trailer on it. That looks real crazy. You bring an ordinance about the trailers, you give our Easter baskets at a house with a trailer on it, and that's in the background. That, that, that looks real crazy. And so now that we see what is happening here, Prepare, because I'm prepared to be the next city commissioner of the city of Oklahoma. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. Citizens Forum is still open. Audrey Dominguez, <clears throat> 1147 Jan Avenue. Um, I want to speak regarding resolution number three, which is the termination of the agreement with the Impressions LLC. The RFP passed May 8th, 2023, almost a year ago. We all have inquired regarding the gateway entry signage installation. Last I inquired, the response was, oh, it's coming. It's coming. You drive through Lejeune Road by the old Opalaka Hialeah Flea Market, and the first thing you see is one of the gateway signs. And the crazy thing is that it has a new logo and it says, welcome to the great city blank. You don't see what city, 
nothing. The letters have all fallen off. Then when you drive through that area, you see these beautiful warehouses. I mean, they look really nice. But then the entry is horrible. I mean, it looks really bad. So it's sad that, you know, some of the commission legislation gets pushed. However, you see other developments, developments that are going up. We need to do better. I also want to speak on resolution number four. The 300 in engineering group PA for consulting services for construction of Cairo Lane. The resolution passed July 20, 2022. The proposed cost was $260,730. 264 additional hours were needed at a cost of 88,203. Now the total cost for this project is is really for consulting fees, $348,933. Two years have passed and we still need additional consulting fees. This project is, was ongoing from 2014 until now. I have two questions. How much money have we spent on consulting fees since this started? And when will it be completed? Now, for the record, I know that the state had allocated millions of dollars for infrastructure in Caroline. I would like to know in writing uh, these two questions that I asked. And that's it. I'll save the rest for later. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Citizens Forum is still open. Janie Russell, <clears throat> Janie Russell, 1210 Perry Street. I've lived in Opelika for over 30 years. I, I am on my street. I love all my neighbors, all of them. We're all one big happy family. I go to everybody's door and knock on their door. How are you? And they know me. They know the Russells. When I speak about the recreation of vehicles, this is not about one group against the other. This is about the quality of life. I've spoken to some of my neighbors are for it, some are against it. I have uh, people that live in my own house that don't agree with me about it. But we have to maintain a quality of life. Um, I don't, I, I'm not here for no particular group. I'm here as a taxpaying citizen that own a home in Opelika. And uh, the recreation of vehicles is not only a problem for us, it's a problem for the people that live in them. If a hurricane comes or something comes and uh, destruction take place, our community is gonna be torn up. And we, all of us in the community, we come together and we help our neighbors. We're not, we're not, and nobody's gonna make me act like this is a one group against the other. That is not my intentions. I've talked to my neighbors. They know how I stand. They know exactly where I stand. I am not for recreational vehicles. Opelika have a lot of housing projects that are gonna be coming up. I'll do whatever I can always have to help my community and get affordable housing so that people can have a decent place to live. Recreation of vehicles is not it. It's not, it's not it for me. So I don't, I agree with it not being so, but this is not, and I'll say it again, this is not a, a racial issue for me. This is not me against you or my neighbor against that neighbor, no. It's about a quality of living and what we want to see in our community. Yeah, so I agree with the um, with the ordinance. Thank you, Chairwoman. Citizens Forum is still open. How are you? Good evening, everyone. How you doing, Mr. Cooper? Um, Mr. Cooper, do me a favor. Can you lift the mic up? Yes. Perfect. Mark Cooper, 6801 Southwest 75 Terrace. Just wanted to congratulate the mayor and the commission for last uh, the ordinance relating to social services. Um, 
as the Opelika comes into the 21st century quickly and, you know, the cost of living and the quality of life gets better here, you're going to run into situations where people really are in dire situations. For example, the night that you guys voted on the city manager's issue, the police chief mentioned how the police had responded to an event on 27th Avenue, the train. But the backstory to that is <clears throat> there was a guy named Armando. He was homeless and he used to live in a vehicle in the junkyard area. He was moved from there and he went to go live in a vehicle in front of a lady's house and code enforcement told the lady he couldn't live there. So now he was really homeless and he was on his cell phone speaking to the lady, telling her, thank you for letting me live in your house as he threw himself in front of the train and committed suicide. That's the background story. So as code enforcement and police have contact with people that are in dire situations, now that you have a social services apparatus, if you fund it a little bit, people that are going to be displaced for sure, maybe you can help them along. So that's not their only alternative. Thank you for that. And also at the last hearing uh, regarding the surplus property, there was going to be, it was approved, but then uh, the issue of the easement had of access to the property was going to be dealt with. And now the, property's been put out for bid for sale so logistically there's only two people that can buy it the two neighbors i would like to buy it but i have no way of knowing that i have access to the property and so i think you're putting the easement issue behind the sale issue and it affects the value of the property and so you probably need to fix the easement issue that the city attorney said she was going to handle before you put it out for bid so thank you thank you mr cooper citizens forum is still open Okay. Citizens Forum is still open. Good afternoon. Nikisha Williams, 1200 Jan Avenue. Um, I'm here to speak in support of, of what I believe is 16 v 3 so the issue related to RVs. One, I'm grateful and thankful that this is on the agenda. So this is an issue that I've been discussing with my official, my elected officials now for months. So before this even came up, because this is an issue that affects all of us here in the city of Opelika. This is about the welfare of our community and the wear and tear on our resources. And so we want to make sure that as we are building and as we are, housing is important, right? We know that housing is important. We know that housing is necessary. But we can't do it on an individual basis. We can't do it by constructing or allowing uh, ADUs in the form of RV RVs. Our approach needs to be regulated. We need to make sure that there's more affordable housing. So I think this is just one step in a larger conversation that needs to happen on this board in regards to how do we address affordable housing. And we know that it's happening actually on a county level, um, but there's more discussion that needs to happen. This is just a first step because our approach should be regulated to ensure that there's safe buildings and structures, but that also people are paying the appropriate taxes. And so I would encourage this board to vote in favor of, um, of this, uh, again, I I believe 16 b3 um in protection of not only our community but our residents thank you thank you miss williams citizens forum is still open citizens forum is now closed all right we're getting ready to move on to item madam attorney 14 1 which is the add-on item a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, authorizing the City Manager to execute Amendment 1 to the Payment Plan Agreement between the City of Opelika and Glorietta Partners, LTD, relating to an outstanding water and sewer bills balance, providing for a corporation of recitals, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the City Manager. All right, can I get a motion? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Commissioner Williams. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, as the commission is now aware, Glorietta Garden stopped paying its water bill uh, to the city of Opelika in the summer of last year. And that bill had reached uh, nearly a million dollars that was owed to the city of Opelika. Uh, obviously, um, they are aware uh, that we would not turn off water to the residents of Glorietta Gardens in order to uh, secure payment. Uh, so they re simply refused to pay that bill. However, we were successful in shutting the water off uh, to the management office, which brought them to the table for discussions. Uh, and we wanted to get a payment plan from them uh, and also presented and approved by this commission before uh, proceeding any further with Glorida Gardens. Uh, they did submit a payment plan to uh, pay the million dollars in a monthly payments. 
of uh, uh, equal payments across 60 months. Uh, on top of their monthly water, on top of their monthly water bill, uh, that's what this agreement here. The commission wanted us to bone that up just a little bit uh, with the three items that you requested. We've worked with the city attorney. We've included those things, brought it back. I will make the uh, the caveat that when the city attorney looked at the language that we proposed. Uh, and uh, also looked at the language that was already in existence, um, that we felt that part of the payment plan uh, would be a tighter looking towards the county's regulation. So you'll see here uh, in this amendment that those regulations are are uh, maintained there, and that would be the only caveat that I would um, uh, share with the share with the commission. But again, that actually strengthens the amendment, and we hope that the commission will vote this amendment and prove it, uh, so that we can begin the collection process. Mr. Mayor, oh. I just want to put on the record before um, you all um, deliberate or vote on it that the the your direction at the last meeting was to um, look at the agreement and um, specifically there there was one particular thing that well a couple of different things there was an issue with the lien mm -hmm. an issue with the um, making sure that it could be legally enforceable and um and one other thing okay yeah here it is sorry about that an issue with the part that's making sure the lien was um satisfied the shut off process and acknowledging uh the right to pursue legal action and so we we took a look at the the two issues dealing with the lien and shut off um issue and it looked like those were already um, kind of strongly addressed a little bit stronger than um, the language that was proposed. Um, and so w this would remain the same. And so I just wanted to make sure that nothing is changing as to the lean and shut off that you, so when you vote for this, just know that it's the same language that was on your last um, meeting agenda. The only thing that's changed here is it actually puts forth what is required in terms of um, the processing the payment that is going to go directly to the bank. So that's the only thing that this does. It just deals with what's happening with the bank and making sure that the bank would be given the appropriate wire instructions and it clarifies the instructions and, and what those are supposed to be and what bank. So that's what this does. And I just want to, you know, make sure that you, you all know we weren't um, going against anything that you had voted on. We just believe that it was a better, the language that you already had, existing was better than what was discussed at the last meeting so so madam attorney i'm glad you brought that up because that's what i was just about to ask what the commission acts is none of that is here not not one yeah well no one thing is here and that is um, what you all decided from the county that's yeah, what's here yeah but what the commission has is not here what the commission asked was already addressed. Basically. No, it was addressed, but we the reason why we was bringing it back is for that to be added in the contract because what we wanted was more meat in the contract it, to hold them accountable. It, but it, it is actually addressed in the contract. I can read it for you in the record if you'd like. Please, because it's not here. No, I don't see it. No but problem. Yeah, it's, in, not it's intentionally not there. But we did send a series of emails today that you all should have seen to try to clarify why that you should have um, received prior to the meeting. Um, and the manager and I both copied the full commission on the items, on the, on the items going back and forth. But let me um, clarify it by letting you know exactly what was in there before. It wasn't in there, Madam Attorney. The original resolution did not address liens or how it, this would be enforced. Uh, 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 yes, sir, it, it, it did. Let me, and I'm sorry to dispute you, but let me okay. um, just find it for you. Okay. The payment plan. Um, the, pe the previous plan um, does set forth um, 
the specific language. It was in one of the emails that I sent to you today, and it was actually highlighted. Um, and um, I am just not pulling it up fast enough. But if you want to go on and talk about it, I will find it momentarily. And I did send it to the manager. So, Mr. Manager, if you see it before I do, feel free to let us know. While the attorney looks up the initial contract, does anybody else have any questions or concerns on this? I, I stated my concerns already. It doesn't reflect what we asked, but anyone else? All right. What do we do, we, Mr. Mayor? Do we want to? Okay, here. Oh, okay. Here it is. Okay. My apologies. So the initial contract under the assurances section, it specifically says that the debt, the debtor may elect to, um, uh, it talks about payment of the balance. And then it says the city, the agreement is being recorded in the public records, which is a good thing in the, in Miami-Dade County, for the particular purpose of placing all owners and occupants, their successors and assigns upon notice of the provisions here and contained. Once final payment pursuant to this agreement is received, a release and satisfaction of payment will be recorded to the unencumber, to unencumber the property. Then specifically, it states that if the debtor, fa debtor fails to comply with the terms and conditions of the agreement, the total amount due, less payments prior to the default date, if any additional charges incurred by the city will be payable immediately upon demand. So that's addressing the issue. If not paid, the creditor shall seek a final judgment and place a lien on said property upon default of the payment agreement terms. Upon default of the payment agreement terms, the city reserves the right to withhold or disconnect water and sewer service rendered on rendered to the property until all indebtedness of the city has been paid in full. The amount of prior indebtedness shall be deducted from any refund or credit. And so it goes on to talk about notice of the default uh, to the tenants and, and that kind of thing. But the point is, it would have to be what was proposed would have to have gone through the court, code enforcement process. This just requires a recording. And once it's recorded, then the city, then that's on, that's, that's encumbering the property terms. So anybody who looks at it will know that the amount of the indebtedness was encumbered on the property. That was in the original this contract? Is, yes, sir. It was in the original contract. We had a whole discussion. Yeah, about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> yeah it was we in the original whole... contract. And, and that... so, and so what, and so what was determined, what Michelle thought, because you remember Michelle Austin Pamis was here um, at, for that part of the meeting. She thought that you all were looking to do something different with that, like you wanted something tighter. But when I looked at it, I don't know what could be tighter and what was proposed was not tighter. So that's why the manager and I, discussed it and he was making the recommendation that we go with what was already proposed but i wanted i didn't want you all to be surprised and i didn't want there to be something where you Clearly thought you were surprised were, where you <laughs> where you thought well no it's it was in the contract so but my point is i didn't want you to think you were voting on what you said because it was already actually there and what was what was there was is good language you want this language you don't want to do a process that would go through code enforcement. You want this. You want it to be recorded. But we never brought up code enforcement. We just yeah. wanted to know the process of, we wanted a lien process and a shutoff process. Yeah. yeah. We talked about that for almost an hour. If you, no, not, no, you <laughs> did. It, it was a really long time. <laughs> okay. Anyway. But you said it's in there. Yeah, it's fine. So, it's... And what I want to want to actually do, explain what we're voting on tonight. Because yes. Clearly so what, you, what you're voting on tonight is you're voting on the language that's in the, that's stricken through. You can see it in the document. Look at the First Amendment and look at the payment plan, Section 2. And it specifically states that it's supposed to be uh, where the funds are supposed to be paid. It's supposed to be paid to City National Bank of Florida, which is the beneficiary bank at the address that's stated and for this account number. That's what you're voting on. So that language was not um, um, that name, which was not addressed in the in the pre prior agreement. Now it is addressed, and this is what you're voting on tonight. I'm gonna go with you, but Madam Clerk, can you forward me the original contract, please? And um, in any other questions or concerns on this? <laughs> Hearing none, um, we can call the question. 
Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Vice Mayor Irvin? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. All right. Moving on to our ordinances. First reading um, 16 A1. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, amending the annual adopted general proprietary and special revenue funds budgets for the fiscal year commencing October 1, 2023, and ending September 30, 2024, adjusting revenues and expenditures as reflected in Exhibit A, providing for the expenditure of funds established by the budget, authorizing the city manager to take certain actions, providing for appropriation of all budgets and expenditures, providing for fees consistent with appropriations and amendment, providing for incorporation of recitals, providing for conflict and repealer, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. This is sponsored by the city manager. All right, Mr. Manager, go ahead and present. And no, I'm sorry, can we get a motion? Move it. Moved by Commissioner Williams. Can I second Thank by you. Vice Mayor? Mr. Manager, go ahead and present and we'll do a public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this ordinance uh, is the first reading. Um, I'm sponsored by... Oh, uh, it's the first reading for our, our next budget amendment, as you know, uh, for those that might be serving on the on the charter board that are residents here. Uh, this might be something we want to look at uh, the way our charter is currently set up that every single unlike most cities after which have uh, certain requirements that may trigger a budget amendment. The way our current charter is set up, every change that we have in a line item uh, triggers a budget amendment. So we have our uh, budget administrator, Mr. Bob Anathan, here uh, to answer any questions that the committee Commission may have uh, regarding this particular budget amendment, and um, he'll be available after uh, public hearing. Okay, this is a public hearing item. Public hearing is open. Public hearing is closed. Do we have any questions for Mr. Anathan on the budget amendment? All right. Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Sorry, Mr. Commissioner. <laughs> he was excited to come up. That's why I apologize. For that. Go ahead, Madam Court. <laughs> he was, he was so excited. <laughs> like a little wandering. <laughs> he was ready. <laughs> Go ahead, Madam Court. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Vice Mayor Irvin? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4 0 first reading. All right. As we move on to our second reading ordinances, um 16a1 b1 an ordinance of the b1, city sorry. commission of the city of opalaca florida amending article 2 division 2 of the city of opalaca's code of ordinances entitled rules of procedure and more specifically section 2.45 f pertaining to preparation of agendas to amend submission and completion dates providing for severability providing for conflict and repealer and providing for an effective date First reading public hearing was held on March 18th, 2024. This is sponsored by Mayor Taylor. All right. Can I get a motion? No, that. Moved by Commissioner Second. Bass. Second by Commissioner Williams. Um, I can explain it. This is an item. We're just changing how we do, how we add items to the agenda. The only addition to it was we added future agenda items, but everything has stood the same from the last um, public hearing. I mean, ordinance reading, first reading. Um, this is a public hearing item. Public hearing is open. Public hearing is closed. Do we have any questions on this item? All right, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Vice Mayor Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4-0. All right, next item, 16B2. Madam Attorney. An ordinance of the City of Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, amending Chapter 19, Article 1, Section 19-9 of the City of Opelika's Code of Ordinances entitled Streets and Sidewalks to create a new section entitled School Zone Speed Limits to require enhanced enforcement of speed limits within roads properly maintained as school zones in accordance with Chapter 316, Florida Statutes, and authorizing the placement and installation of speed detection systems on roadways maintained as school zones, providing for severability, providing for conflict and repealer, and providing for an effective date. First reading public hearing it was held on March 18th, 2024. This is sponsored by Mayor Taylor. All right. Um, can I get a motion? Move. Moved by Commissioner Williams. 
Move it. Second by second, Vice Mayor. Um, I can explain this item as well. Um, this is putting our children first. There has been several instances since the beginning of the year that we've lost a lot of children to people speeding in school zones. So this allows the city to enforce that if you speed in a school zone, you will be ticketed in the city of Opalaka. And I would think the, the first day, the first reading, we lost actually lost a child in Miami Gardens who was hit by a car because of a driver speeding in a school zone. And we want to do whatever we can to prevent that from happening in the city of Opalaka. So that's what this ordinance is. This is a public hearing item. So public hearing is open. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. I'm Ailette Rodriguez-Diaz with Miami-Dade County Public Schools, the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. I bring greetings on behalf of our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jose Dotrez, our school board members, and our Chief of Intergovernmental Affairs, Ms. Tabitha Fazino. We are located at 1450 Northeast 2nd Avenue. My suite is 776 Miami, Florida 33132. We are here in support of the effort that will keep our students safe. And once we you have information, we will be more than happy to share that information on the launch of the program with our community members and our families. The school board meeting just took place, actually the commission, the committee meeting just took place today and our school board was discussing the school speed zones and Ms. Fazino did share with them that the city of Opalaka would be hearing its ordinance tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearing is still open on this item. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening, Commission. I would just like to come up in my support of this ordinance um, and for the safety of our children. I am the principal at Dr. Robert B. Ingram Elementary School. And when I heard about this... What's the address of the school? I'm 600 Ahmaud Street. And when I heard about this, I was very elated because of what you said. We have lost many children because of the speeding. And we've also had a child to be hit. Thank God he did not pass away, but he was hit in the city of Opalaka about a month ago. So I hope that everyone is in agreement with this because it is about our children. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Clay. Public hearing, public hearing is still open. Public hearing is closed. I just want to say for the record, because I know I, I, the commission asked us to do this, that we did do outreach. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend, but the chief um, stood proxy in my place and went to the schools in Opalaka to let them know what was what was being discussed here in the city of Opalaka. So we just want to let you all know that we did do the outreach and hit the schools to let them know what was coming down the pipe if this so passes tonight. So do we have any questions or concerns on this item? Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Williams. Just want to um, say thank you for the outreach to the schools and to the school system, um, just to, to ensure that our children are safe and that our schools know, our schools know our parents. I'm so glad to see Dr. Clay here, as always, her support. Um, just to make sure that we're always in constant communication with our schools, our teachers, and our parents. So thank you. Um, I'm excited because bringing children first at the is always at the forefront of every school um, in every community. And um, making sure that that communication goes out is always the best thing that, that we should do, that we need to do, and continue to um, make sure I always, my, my stance is always, that we can't just teach in the four walls of our schoolhouse, but it has to also be in the community as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Clay. And Ms. Um, if this does pass tonight, we will give you that information to be disseminated through the county. Yes. Any other questions or concerns on this item? All right. Commissioner Bassett, let's roll. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Irvin. Yes. Commissioner 
Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. All right. Thank you all. Next, we're going into 16B3. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Opelika, Florida, pertaining to the storage of recreational vehicles, amending Article 5, Section 22-116 of the City of Opelika's Land Development Regulations, providing recreational vehicle storage is prohibited on property zone residential, amending Chapter 7, Article 1, Section 7-6, of the Opelok, City of Opelaka's Code of Ordinances to establish a civil penalty for noncompliance, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. First reading, public hearing was held on March 18th, 2024. This is sponsored by Commissioner Williams. Oh, okay. Um, can I get a motion? Move it. Moved by Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Commissioner Williams. Um, Commissioner Williams, go ahead and introduce him as the public hearing. Okay. Um, really quick. This uh, item is to preserve, um, again, the wear of our community. Being a resident here for 40 plus years, um, yes, I will say this has absolutely nothing to do with any one person's race, ethnicity, demographics. This is all about preserving our community in terms of who pays taxes, who does not, who overwhelms our small four-point mile community with, in terms of sewage, in terms of water, in terms of everything that we know single family homes have. Like I expressed before, single family homes, we already pay an increase in light bill, water bills, and bills, period. Taxes have gone up. So now when we bring another family onto a single family property, that overwhelms a community, that overwhelms our drainage, our sewage, and that's what we want to do. So I am quite appalled that it will be seen as a racial or ethnic or demographic issue because this is a community issue. It is one community and that's all it's ever been. And that's what it will be as long as I'm up here on this dais. Thank you. All right. This is a public hearing item. Public hearing is open. Audrey Dominguez, 1147 Jan Avenue. Um, what I would like to speak is, I, I missed the first meeting. However, when this was brought up, I know that it was mentioned that there was gonna be a workshop and that it would be notified via water bill. Well, I have my water bill here and I have yet to see a notification of any sort of workshop. It, it's not that I'm against it, but we need to be better informed. Residents need to know what's going on and also, I noticed that if it passes, um, before finding a resident $500, I think they should issue a warning first. And then after the 30 days, maybe if it has to be to remove the RV, a fine could be imposed. Um, but I think that $500 is really high at this moment. And I think I think it should be lower. But if, you, if you're going to say on the record that it's going to be inputted on your water bill, you know, do what you're saying. Don't just say it just to let people think that it's going to be a, a workshop and you don't follow with a workshop. Public hearing is still open. <clears throat> Brian Dennis, address 2140 York Street. Um, I'm in the process of now looking to purchase a home or maybe a condo. But at the same time, let's be realistic. Who's living in those RVs? The reality of it, who's living in them? Ain't got to do nothing about racism. Who's living in them? The second thing that I'm getting ready to address is every city in the street of Opelika needs to be tore up. It's bad piping. It's been leaking since 1986. You need to go get a, a report from the South Florida Water Management District. It will tell you that every street in this city has leaky pipage. Then now we're talking about making people homeless, right? So 
if the city of Opelika was involved with a gentleman jumping in the front of the train, and now from what I just understood from someone calling me late last night or earlier today about the Black Blues, now you're just about, because the city went back there, now you're about to have almost 400 families homeless because from my understanding, her just took all the funding off the table. So it seems like some things need to be thought through. Not that I'm against it, because it is an eyesore. But you have to think about what we're getting ready to put in place to those who aren't in a position to actually get what they need to be come gainfully home, to have a home or an apartment. Affordable housing ain't affordable. Say what you want, do what you will. Citizens for public hearing is still open. Good evening again, um, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioner. Um, I want to make uh, my point uh, more clear uh, tonight, okay, with this um, uh, ordinance. Is me, I'm, I'm not uh, going to support that something is illegal and it's going to stay out there. What I heard, you know, for the person uh, before me is right. What, what people really need here, and, and I saw 1156 Perry Street, again. <laughs> um, what we really need is information about what's going on. Right now, if you deny that ordinary pass, it's says pass, is pass. Okay, but we, we're going to put a lot of people in jeopardy, you know, like where they're going to go or where they're going to park in these trailers in one month or something like that. What I try to explaining to to the sponsor is like we need more information about it and you had to teach him you know people like the way the thing have to be okay in the city that we have to follow rules and regulation and the law but not like that in one day disappear everything and we don't even know nothing i never received any notice or any information about the the first reading uh, ordinance and many of the people of Opalaka are asking, they, they don't even know nothing about it. And that's what I say, why they don't do a workshop first and let it know the resident, let it know the people about, about what's going on before we do something so drastic like that, that is going to affect them. It's going to affect a lot of people. But it's up to you tonight. You want to vote in yes? Yes. It's not a problem. Okay, I'm not going to go against what is right. Okay, and what is illegal is illegal. And I know that. Now, making something very clear tonight about taxpayers, I'm a taxpayer too. But let me say, let me tell you what I learned in Meet Me Monday the other day uh, when the director of sue, uh, water and sewer for Dade County. We not pay that. We not pay that. Everybody pay it. Even whoever have a trailer, I don't have no trailer, but whoever have a trailer and they connect into the sewer and to the water, they pay water and they pay sewer. How? I learned how. Anytime that water meter running, okay, it running, whatever go out, is counted by the water meter. It's me. Nobody pay for our own taxes that we pay for the property. It's not, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. They pay. But that's not legal what you say, like they have the trailer there, you know that. We have to have some regulations and some rules for trailing, for recreation trailing. You can have it in your house, but it's only for recreation enough to make people to live there. It's right. There's nothing wrong with that. But let it know people first before you do something. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Public hearing is still open. Good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Retivia Natasha Walden, 1860 Service Road, Opalaka, Florida, 33054. I hear a lot about trailers. I hear a lot about us not knowing. I've lived here for almost 40 years. I've seen some good, some bad, and some ugly. I'm looking at now a lot of code enforcement, compliance, is not being adhered to. I do think the citizens of Opalaka know better. We do know that we cannot bring certain 
vehicles on properties. I know we've talked about workshops and stuff like that, but we know as human beings that we cannot encroach other people's property with what we're doing. We cannot bring trailers on property. We know that in Miami is very hard to live and I'm retired, semi-retired as a nurse. But yet and still, we know the laws, but we have a lot of people moving into Opalaka, non-blacks, non-whites, and we're acting as though we don't know the law. My property have been encroached for months. I thank God for our chief that have been disrespected by people that have done wrong in Opalaka. They removed my gates. They removed other citizen gates. They have harassed our police department. They've harassed our code enforcers. They've harassed our building and licensing administrator that some code enforcers, I will not call names, don't even want to come out anymore and do their job. I thank God for our manager that I've dealt with, our vice mayor that I've dealt with, our police chief, the sergeant, I'm being harassed. My family is being threatened by people that have encroached my property. We know better, Opalaka. But I do think we have to do better as a city and our commissioners to make sure that everybody that's below the commissioners, the mayors, the city enforcers do their job, do their job. Yes, ma'am. Because right about now, my life has been threatened and my family for neighbors that have encroached my property. Finally, I think the city of Opalaka came out and red tagged that home. I would like to know, red tag, how long? do it take to go to a different um, procedure? Yes, Is it 30 days? Because I will be looking at it. Yes, ma'am. I will be looking at it. Yes, ma'am. We'll get the manager to get somebody to talk to you offline. Thank you. Dr. Walden. God bless you all. No problem. All right. Public hearing is still open. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Oh, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. You was looking. Okay. Um, two things. I heard two things come up before we move forward with calling for the question. The first thing was the communication to the residents. I would, um, in terms of a workshop setting. Well, let me just say generally, and every most everyone that have been um, an elected official here in Opalaka knows that we don't typically do workshops before we pass because that would break the sunshine. However, let me ask Mr. Manager, if we we did talk about how we were going to before we move forward no, with the enforcement. So, oh, so the enforcement. I think there was a miscommunication about what was, about the process. Uh, we are endeavoring as we have worked with you on your legislation to make sure that all the uh, all of the uh, residents are aware before this gets enforced. So there will be a period where uh, our, the city will be reaching out to residents. We will be hosting workshops. There will be no code enforcement to make everyone that has an RV at their home aware of the situation, uh, aware of a time frame to answer questions. And after that period, uh, after that, after that 90 day period where the city has already reached out to all of the homes, owners or, or, or tenants that are at these properties and they're aware of the situation, 
not until after that happened will the first uh, citation be issued. So we will be hosting workshops. We will be going door to door. We will be having conversations if this legislation is passed uh, and it be the will of the commission to you know, give our residents an opportunity to, to prepare for the enforcement. So the enforcement will not be happening uh, right away. Thank you. And the second thing, if you don't mind, through the mayor, Mr. Manager, can I ask Ms. Wilcox to please come up if you don't mind? Absolutely. Thank you. Ms. Wilcox. Norman Wilcox, Code Compliance. Thank you, Ms. Wilcox. I just had a quick question. Something was stated in terms of the, the, the I believe it was the sewer bill, the, what bill was it that was stated? Uh, the, the water lines, the water, the meters. Um, I, I, I want to be clear because we do know and we've said I wouldn't I would never bring legislation without doing complete homework on when we talk about legal legality and what's legal. So can you let me know, is that a thing that it does not touch or it will not increase anyone's uh, water bill? If it's connected, which by the way, it is illegal to, mm -hmm. it is considered an illegal connection. And yes, it does increase the water bill. Is that true? Does that increase the water bill for just that particular person on that property? Or is that something that will, con if, if we just allow this to happen, could that potentially increase the water bills of all residents? Mr. Mayor? If I may, to uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner Williams, that is uh, that is actually I understand. Public yes, uh, that's actually I, I do have the answer, but that is actually a, a public works department issue. Uh, and uh, and to your point, it does happen. Uh, depends on where the connection is made. First, as as Mrs. Wilcox, our code enforcement manager, stated, it is illegal to proceed in that manner at all. That's not something that we can even permit you to do. But it does happen uh, depending on where the connection is made. Uh, we actually had a connection that was made out to the street line. Uh, which, as you all may are aware, this person came to commission. There was some severe damage there. He created a uh, uh, um, water sewage backup uh, into the main home. Uh, but what happens is that if you connect at the home, yes, that water is going to pass through, uh, that water is going to pass through uh, the meter and be read and that, and the homeowner will get a bill with, with, with that amount. However, when we've seen where lines get actually connected to uh, the main line, that is the cities. So that is a situ situation and scenario where the water uh, consumption is not going to be captured by the meter, but we're still going to get as a city that's going to be paid by all the taxpayers. We still will get a bill for that. Yes. Ms. Wilcox. Oh, thank you, Mr. Manager. Ms. Wilcox, is there any other particular things in terms of the, 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 the specificities of this particular having RVs and allowing RVs? Is it, is this a, where, what's the pros and the cons if we continue to allow RVs? And, and and we know it could be two issues. It could be for housing, affordable housing, also to make extra money to supplement income. What are those things, those pros or, con, and I, 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 or cons on a city? Cons. Cons. I don't see any, yes, I don't exactly. see any pros. Mm -hmm. There's many cons. I mean, first of all, you got people that I we have, you. you got individuals that are literally renting out these trailers for an astronomical amount, like $1,500 just to have a trailer on their lot. The code on, of ordinance only allows, well, actually it doesn't say how many. And that's, that is a con because now with the city not having a number that allows them like maybe one per household, there is no number there. And that is that is an issue because now you're just bringing trailers as long as they're in the back or the side of the property is unsightly. It's a lot of things. And like you said, the sewer connection, the sewer itself creates a, a hazardous condition, those type of things. Okay. Um, they cannot live in the trailer. You have an ordinance that speaks to that. They cannot live in those trailers. And the city actually has an adopted ordinance that alludes to that. So, thank you so much, um, Commissioner Wood. 
Thank you so much. Okay. You, you okay. I just want to add to everything that's going on. This is not just an Opalaka issue. It's actually a county-wide issue. And I just want to bring this to the the bring this to you all's attention, the city of Opalaka residents. Last week in the county, a resolution was introduced by Commissioner Renee Garcia. I mean, Anthony Rodriguez and Senator Renee Garcia. And the resolution reads, a resolution directing the county mayor and county mayor's designee to provide the Miami-Dade County property appraiser with notice of properties receiving homestead exemption and which have been cited for unlawful parking of a recreational vehicle on a residential property for living or sleeping quarters. So what does that mean? In this county, Miami-Dade County, if you have an RV on your property and someone is living there, you will lose your homestead exemption and you will be cited for homestead fraud. That's in Miami-Dade County and that passed last week and it was adopted. This is not just an Opa-Laka issue. It's a strain on the county's issue as a whole. So it's not, this is not a race issue. It's an infrastructure issue. It's that's this. So I just want to bring that to y'all's attention. So this is counties addressing it. Cities around us are addressing because everybody understands that the infrastructure in Miami-Dade County is failing. So they have to take drastic measures in order to stop the bleeding. So like I just stated in the county just last week, and I want to say the names again, Anthony Rodriguez, Senator um, um, Renee Garcia, though that was the prime sponsor and the co-sponsor of this item. So if you have in Miami-Dade County an RV on your property and someone is living in it, you will lose your tax, um, your um, homestead exemption and be fined with fraud. So this is not, this is not just an open, it, it is deep. So Yes, thank you, Commissioner Williams, for bringing this forward because it's needed here in the city of Opelika. Yes, it is an eyesore, but on the, on top of all of that, is it it is a strain on our already failing infrastructure, as what was mentioned already during um public hearing. Opelika's infrastructure is antiquated and old, so we cannot continue to add to that. We have to fix. So. Again, thank you for bringing this. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns on I'm this ready item? For the question. Um, Vice Mayor says she's ready to call the question. Um, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Vice Mayor Irvin? Yes. Mayor Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. Um, we can move on to our manager's report. But before we move on, um, we already closed that agenda and it, it passed, the ordinance passed. So we just want to make sure, Mr. Manager, I know Commissioner Williams has said, already said she's going to do this, but I just want to stress it, that we, the outreach happens. And it wasn't supposed to go in the water bill now. It's supposed to go in the water exactly. bill after tonight. So we want to ensure that the residents know what's coming up. I think you said it's, 90 days in the it's ordinance. It's 90 days. It's 90 days in the ordinance. So if we have to do... You know, I love knocking on doors. So give me some flyers and I will knock on doors to get to put the word out so people will know what's yeah. coming down yeah. the pipe. Um, so we just want to make sure that the outreach is coming because this is, like I said, it's not just the Opelika thing, it's the county thing. So they need to be aware. They need to be aware because everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mr. Manager, we can go with your report and then we can move on. Yes. Uh, thank you. So we have some. Um, <clears throat> Topics to discuss, uh, I will res they may require some extensive discussion, so I will uh, reserve my report to uh, your report, sir, when I can give some updates on Glorida Gardens and financial oversight. Okay. Um, any questions to the manager outside of the Glorida Gardens and the financial oversight? Mr. Mayor? Commissioner Bass? Um, just a quick question in regards to 22AV and the... Um, situation that occurred a couple of weeks ago. Well, I think about a week and a half ago, two Saturdays ago. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know if you have any information regarding the security team, if it was present or not. And if not, what are we doing as a city? 
So um, that is an open investigation at this time, Commissioner Bass. Uh, I will, uh, if the chief has any updates on that, I'll allow him to come up. However, that is an open investigation at this time. As you are aware, for all of our apartment complexes with 50, uh, more than 50 units, uh, uh, security is required. Uh, that is something that we check. That is something that we review. Um, I don't want to say much further on that at this time, but I will bring you an update upon the conclusion of that investigation with a sound response and how we are going to respond to it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. And Mr. Manager, um, the only thing I have on your report to add is we actually bring us a report on the opera funds was supposed to be last meeting. Can we get that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Moving on, oh, I'm sorry, any other questions? All right, um, do we have any official board reports? Seeing no chairs here. Uh, future agenda items, anybody putting forth a future agenda item? Okay, hearing none. So we're moving on to the mayor and commission report. I'm sorry, we're going back to future agenda. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I know, I'm not sure if we have it on our books already where the Apartment complexes and businesses have to have an enclosure around the dumpsters. So I'm just going to leave it as that. So you're proffering uh, an ordinance that dumpsters must be enclosed. Apartments and businesses. All right. Um, so, Madam Clerk, the a resolution or an ordinance to do dumpsters and closures for apartments and businesses in the city of Opalaka. That's the future agenda item for Commissioner Bass. Um, we said it before, so I'm in agreement with it. Anybody else? Any opposed? Any opposed to adding this to the agenda? No, no opposition. So we can move forward with that. All right. Next on the agenda, which is the Mayor and Commission report, we can start from left to right. Madam wow. Williams. Oh, sorry. We're gonna start from right to left. <laughs> Good evening again, Mayor. Be before you all move on, I just um, there is a section in the, and I'll uh, get with the um, code enforcement, but there's a section in the code that talks about specifically dumpster dumpster enclosures, and so that is um, Article Four um, in your city code, and I just want to take a look at it first. And if it sufficiently covers what you are seeking to do, then I'm assuming you don't want it to come back on the agenda. Okay, thank you. All right, bye, bye, bye. Okay. Um, I want to give, I want to give a shout out to the beautification team. Today, when I'm doing my tour of the city that I do most days, Opalaka Boulevard from 27th Avenue on around. Looked amazing today. Amazing. 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 I don't know why street sweep was sweeping the daytime, but it still looked amazing. And um, I do want to encourage our residents our friends or family and all that other good stuff. So please come out to manifest this weekend. I think it's going to be a really great event. I'm particularly um, interested in the archery and of course the belly dancing. Belly dance. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn and um, come out the city, you know, I, I run across people in the street and they're like, you all are really doing great things in Opalaka. Unfortunately, many of them don't see the stuff we do here. They see what's going on on the outside and they're very pleased with what we're doing. I just want more to come out. Employees, y'all welcome to come out to our stuff. Trust me, it's okay. Don't y'all think it's okay? It's okay. It's okay. Come out. Enjoy what we put forth together um, for our residents. I thank you. And I hope everyone enjoyed Easter. And that's that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Bass. Two things. 
I want to say thank you to everyone who came out on Saturday to, to support our first community chess event. Um, hopefully that we will have more residents to show up on the next, but it was really good to see first time players learning the game. And um, is it too late to add to the uh, future agenda? Yeah, another... mm -hmm. Give me one second. Let's finish. Okay, the... well, I'll, and then we'll I'll... come back. I think I'm going to add to it too. Um, Commissioner Williams. Okay, um, really quick. I think this might be the quickest. Well, no. We almost made it. Um, real quick, I hope everyone, like um, Vice Mayor said, enjoyed their Easter. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for the pool party and um, all the festivities that happened. Thank you to the to Parks and Recreation, um, who was there from sun up to sundown with the kids. Um, it was uh, yeah, it was kids everywhere. Kids were everywhere, and it was it was a great. Um, Thing, sight to see bringing out um, all of our children. I can tell you on that particular day, anybody that had a kid at the park, you got free babysitting services for like 24 hours. Seriously. <laughs> um, lastly, again, um, I think it's called Mena, Mena Fest. I accidentally wrote Mena Feast, so I think I'm hungry. But... <laughs> I'm I'm excited. Please come out. It's going to be it's going to be amazing. Um, an amazing job. Um, thank you to the city, 10 North Group, everyone that's um rolling up their sleeves to make this happen. Um, but not just this particular event, but I'm I'm looking forward to when the city does our events and um city of Opalaka does our events okay and then moving on mr manager i would like for us to have a workshop since that work on the historic city hall is moving and it looks great it looks amazing um i would if and i know adding more workshops but having a workshop on what that ribbon cutting date is what the paint would be what we plan to do um, I think all of this needs to be um, all the, the commission as well as our community needs to have input on what that looks like. I don't know what the plans are for, like I say, the ribbon cutting, the paint, what how the paint spectrum, and then what we plan to do inside actual. Um, but again, having all, all of the commission to decide that. Um, I believe that's it, but I do, I would like to say, please, 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 please continue to pray for the Lenoir family. Um, Miss Lenoir is a teacher at my school, Miami Northwestern Senior High School. And um, I know, knew her husband very well and Pastor Lenoir. And so we are heartbroken by what happened, um, but continue. She, I spoke with her and the strength of a praying wife is amazing. So, and her, and her children. So let's continue to keep that family in prayer. Understand that mental health is real. And I'm so glad that we uh, will continue to make the connection with all the, the mental health organizations here in Opelika. Uh, Mr. Manager, I would please employ that we continue to um, build what that will, how we will continue to work with our mental health organizations here in Opelika, because you're here today and gone tomorrow, link of an eye. So thank you all so much. Okay. All right, and Mr. Manager, well, before you do that, we just wanna say bingo is this Friday at 6 p.m. So we're inviting the community out to come play bingo with us. And Mr. Manager, Gloria the Gardens and Financial oversight. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me pull up my notes uh, really quickly. I uh, want to first provide you an update on the financial oversight. Uh, as you all are aware, we are closing in um, and have completed um, our fiscal fiscal year 2022 and submitted that by the deadline that was requested by the state. So we are still in good graces with the state. All required fiscal fiscal year 2022 financial reports 
uh, and audits for the, both the city and the CRA were timely submitted to DFS, JLAC, and all the other applicable entities. I'd like to state again, this is the first time in the history uh, that the CR CRA's report was submitted uh, uh, completely without free of any caveats. Uh, so uh, applaud to our finance department for that. Um, in addition, uh, we anticipate completing the fiscal year 2022 financials um, uh, current current fiscal year by the end of September 2024. However, I intend to still request uh, till December uh, from the state if approved. Um, however, continue to uh, work toward that September deadline, as that is what we are projecting at this time. Uh, we are pending. Um, uh, we've been doing some wrap up and cleanup work on the fiscal year 2022, uh, and we're pending state approval of the resolution to proceed uh, with the 2023 report. The company is standing by the moment that we get an email from uh, the state saying that that is approved. Uh, they're ready to jump back in and uh, run to the races for fiscal year 2023. Uh, I'll take any questions the commission may have uh, regarding state financial oversight. And when do we anticipate submitting last year? Did you say? Uh, September, so September 2024, although I intend to request uh, December 2024. Mr. Manager, you don't have to feel about that. Yes, you've stated it numerous yeah, times. The minimum that we have to do to get the city from out of financial oversight is to submit an audit on time. So that pushes us back. Actually, no, sir. It, it does. doesn't. No, it sir. Due, no, sir. It was last month. No, sir. This is still uh, this is still a great leap, jump, trans uh, uh, teleportation forward. Uh, as, I'm, as, I'm going based on Florida statute and Florida law. The minimum we will have to do, but okay, you said I, I, I want to make sure that this is on the forefront because it, it pushes us back. Especially if we go September, then you said you're going to ask for December. That means we're going to be we're still in the hole, and then the next one will be doing March of 2025, and it's not so going to be submitted. But we've been, uh, Mr. Mayor, we've been in the hole as you're aware for 10 years. This is the as as the state has said. As the state said, they, they believe that this is the first time that any city in the state of Florida has ever submitted three annual financial reports in 18 months. The state has said that. Uh, so you are driving the fastest horse on the race, and we're moving as fast as we possibly can. If we can get it done in September, we absolutely will get it done in September. Uh, but I would prefer not to be in a situation where we're unable to meet that September deadline and we fail. Um, and that is what the state has said. They said, give us a deadline that you know you can make rather than a, a deadline that you'd like to make. Uh, so we absolutely, we can get it done in September. We will get it turned in September, but we want to have that wiggle room there uh, because if we provide them with, as, you, as you're well aware, if we provide them with the deadline and don't meet that deadline, they can take action because we gave them that deadline. Either way, I don't agree, but okay, okay. because the state has said a lot of things, but I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that, but we, we're good. Any other question on financial oversight? All right. And the next one is the, um, the glory of the gardens, glory of the gardens. Yes. I want to provide information that can be, uh, uh, of public use, but I also want to make the commission aware that there are several conversations being had uh, at the federal level and at the county level uh, regarding Glorietta Gardens. Um, I will be more than happy to meet with the commission one on one to give you some of those uh, interpersonal, excuse me, uh, uh, internal dialogue conversations. Uh, what has a, what we know is a, that has occurred is while the uh, while Glorietta Gardens is in conversations as you just passed the payment plan that we negotiated uh, with the city of Opelika, uh, we still have to address, they have over $600,000 in, in fines. Uh, and and so um, we, we still need to press forward with a consent agreement. They've also looked into, as you're aware, the county has sued Gloria Gardens, uh, and they're negotiating a settlement agreement uh, with Gloria Gardens um, at this time as well. In addition, uh, HUD has been inspecting uh, uh, Gloria Gardens for some time now. Uh, last Wednesday, they uh, informed us that they are looking to to impose what is called a prepayment uh, a penalty. Uh, that penalty would be over six million dollars. Um, and if the property is unable to pay that, uh, they are uh, they're looking to abate that contract. 
Now, it appears, uh, based on statements that Gloria Gardens have made, that they will be able to uh, move forward with that may move forward with that payment. We have a meeting with them uh, on Monday uh, to determine what their assessment is, what their plan is on on how to address HUD. HUD has been invited. HUD will be present. Uh, they have, uh, but they also said that in order to pay that, that they wouldn't want to continue to make uh, certain payment arrangements uh, for any displaced uh, residents. Uh, HUD responded by saying, "Well, then we will look, uh, we will look for housing for them, but we're not going to let you." Uh, uh, move the residents back into uh, building eight. Um, so there is some contention right now between the owners of Florida Gardens who want to move the residents back into building eight and also HUD, uh, which has uh, which has refused based off of their findings uh, to allow that to move forward. Uh, we believe that that can be hashed out uh, perhaps on Monday. Uh, that is our goal. That's our plan. Uh, there are some additional details that uh, I'd be more than willing and happy to share uh, with regard to those internal conversations, uh, both with HUD, uh, and Gloria the Gardens, and, and more importantly, Miami-Dade County. Uh, Miami-Dade County has an interest in, in making sure that our residents, uh, you know, have safe and, and livable conditions as well, which was the purpose of their lawsuit. So um, those are the extensive conversations that we're having right now. Um, and when we hope to have even more answers after our meeting with uh, Gloria the Gardens on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. All right. Any other... I didn't want to say it, but Mr. Dennis brought up the abatement, and I got those calls too from residents that they were told that HUD pulled the funding mm -hmm. from Glorietta Gardens, and I got those calls as well. Actually, the calls was you all made us homeless. That's what was the call. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to ask is it true because obviously you need to give us more information. Now, I'm assuming that's what you meant when you said internal conversations. Yes, sir. Well, to the issue, uh, I, as Commissioner Williams says, I can see that both ways. Uh, to the extent that uh, Gloria Gardens threatened to say we're no longer going to pay your hotel bill, uh, yes, that could be uh, looked at as you know, a, a, a housing challenge. And to the extent that HUD responded to Glorietta Gardens uh, with saying, well, if you won't continue to pay the bill, well, you're going to lose the money. You're going to lose all the revenue from these residents because we'll give them vouchers uh, to live somewhere else. So uh, without saying too much, as you said, I, I believe that those are threats from both sides uh, that we can work through on Monday uh, and hope to work through on Monday at our at our next meeting. And, and even with the as requested, um, once the city was not involved in those conversations between uh, HUD uh, and Gloria Gardens, uh, we were informed after the fact. Uh, so I want to be clear uh, that this is private property with a federal contract and federal funding. The interest of the city of Opalaka is just to ensure that they meet our minimum housing standards. Uh, that's why we're there. That's why we're present. Uh, we are, have enforced ourselves into the table, enforced ourselves into the conversation to protect our residents. Uh, but the, at the, the end of the day, you have a private entity and a federal government. Um, now, as I said, we are very, very hopeful that we'll be able to bridge the gap. And they've already, and, I, and one of the things that makes me hopeful with uh, HUD is that they already honored one of our requests. They could have issued uh, vouchers that al immediately allowed their residents to uh, you know, roll out. Uh, but what they did was issued the temporary vouchers that um, once, housing is, once housing is found and housing is secured, when your housing, where you stay, uh, where you are living right now, which is within the city of Opalaka, is, is habitable again, that how it's a temporary voucher. That, house, that voucher goes away and you return. Uh, so we're making some progress. Um, we're working on behalf of the interests and the of of the residents, and also the interests of the commit of the commission. As I've heard your concerns, Mr. Mayor, and, and heard your concerns uh, from the commission, uh, we are at the table uh, with the parties now. They are going to be coming to the city of Opalaka, uh, and we hope to have some. We hope to have some resolution on Monday. All right, um, Vice Mayor. I, I just, um, as many of you all know, that. Um, I have family that lives in the in the Gar Glorieta apartments. Um, and I received call calls and the calls I got was about the Zoom call that was held um yesterday. But 
So, because I want us to be mindful because Mr. Dennis mentioned that there will be 400 plus people without somewhere to stay. That's not what I was told. Right now, this is only pertaining to building eight. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. You're correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other concerns to the manager? Just real, real quick, Mr. Manager. I know there's a lot of moving parts and push and pull going on with the issue with Gloria Gardens. And I, I'm, I, I am afraid that as we move forward, the attention or lack thereof will, will you know, it, it'll stop. And then it will it will thrust just your office or just you into working or having those conversations with all these other entities out here. My question is, since there's so much push and pull going on, do we need to now look, and I don't even know if this is a thing, like a housing person, a housing specialist, a housing lawyer, housing attorney, are those things that we now need to possibly bring, um, you know, my favorite word, consultant, um, so that so that we can ensure, because I, again, I know, you know, as in the beginning, there's, you know, it was a lot of, the auditorium was full with residents and, you know, um, you know, and and we just want to make sure that 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 we're not just solely only or or you in the manager's office or everyone that works every department that it, you're it's not like you not to say you don't know what you're doing or people don't know what they're doing but just to ensure that we're you know getting things done by having someone that can do this work and not just solely on one person Absolutely. I would be uh, more than happy if it be the will of the commission to uh, engage a professional consultant to service the city in this area. All right. Okay. And if I can just weigh in on that, that would need to be done through um, an RFP process and it would not be an attorney. Um, and I can talk through why with you off record, but that would be an RFP process. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Do we have any official board appointments? All right, hearing none. All right, we're getting... I do have an announcement, Mr. Mayor, for a shade meeting. Go ahead, Madam Attorney. Thank you. Notice is hereby given of an announcement for a closed door executive session with the city commission um, to privately discuss pursuant to section 286.011 Florida statutes. It will be held in commission chambers, 780 Fisherman Street, Opelaka, Florida on April the 24th, 2024, starting at 6.30 p.m. on the third floor and we, or will be moved to an adjoining room on that floor. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss the following pending litigation. Madam Attorney. Um, I think we have a workshop that day. Oh, do we? Yes. Mr. Manager, what's that workshop on? Six. Oh, uh, parks development. Will it be more than an hour? Well, more than 30 minutes, I mean? More than likely, yes, sir. I just need 15 minutes, so I don't know so if can we, we do, can do Can we do a hard things? stop at 645 and then transition to to this? You were... Uh, That's going to be, it's going to be difficult. Uh, that's that's going to be difficult, but we certainly can do that. All right. So 540, 645. Okay. Well, people okay. If that's the, if that's okay with the commission, I'll My go point. ahead and announce that. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Notice is hereby given that a private closed door attorney client session pursuant to section 286.011 Florida statutes will be held in the commission chambers, 780 Fishman Street, Opelika, Florida on April the 24th, 2024, starting at 645 p.m. on the third floor will be moved to an adjoining room on that floor. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss the following pending litigation matter which is Town Center OL1 LLC versus City of Opelika, case number 2023-027045CA-01. The following individuals will attend, Mayor Taylor, Vice Mayor Irvin, Commissioner Bass, Commissioner Kelly, Commissioner Williams, City Manager Darwin Williams, City Attorney Bernadette Norris Weeks, Assistant City Attorneys Michelle Austin Pammies and Candace Cobb. And on the record court reporting, the estimated length of the attorney client session is slated to be 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Okay. Anything else from the commission? Um, just quickly, I'm not sure this will be a um, future agenda item, how you would talk to the manager. Um, looking into enforcing a one-way at the schools during certain times, because I know at yes. our school there's an issue Yes. where our kids... Yeah. Yes, Dr. Clay talked to Chief and I about that issue when we went uh, when we went out there, and that would need to be a future agenda item. Okay, to okay. do a feasibility study on one yeah. ways at um, public Thank schools. You. Public schools, yes, yeah. Sir. Thank public you, sir. schools. Thank you. All right, um, uh, you got the you got the the resolution. A resolution to do a feasibility study for the manager to do a feasibility study on one way streets during certain times during at schools throughout the city of Opelika. All right, I'm in agreement. Of course, Bass is, yeah. Mission Williams is, and so it can move to the agenda. All right, so thank you all. Thank you all. We'll see you Friday for bingo and see you Saturday for a manifest. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Move it. Uh, move by Vice Mayor. Can I get a second? Can I get a second? A second. This uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.